been about 30 days since Google launched their flagship $1,000 smartphone, the Pixel 8 Pro. And during that time, I've been able to put this phone through its paces in my everyday life and answer some burning questions like, are the AI features actually useful? And what do I actually use the temperature sensor for? But even more so, being a lifelong iPhone user, I couldn't help but compare the two phones a little. So here's my 30 day review of the Pixel 8 Pro with a couple of comparisons to the iPhone. Also, if you're into this tech stuff and you're not yet subscribed, consider doing so using the button down below. It helps the channel out a ton and I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get into the review. Now, a good phone starts with a good design and one of the best parts about the Pixel 8 Pro is this frosted glass back. I've actually never felt anything as buttery, silky, and milky smooth as this frosted glass back. And if you just listen, Hopefully you can tell from the audio, but this phone feels unlike any other smartphone on the market right now. It is super smooth and it's hard to believe that this is glass. Across the back of the phone, we've got this polished aluminum visor, which also frames the entire phone as well. Now there are mixed opinions about this visor. Some people think it looks weird, but personally, I like it. Not only does this visor make this phone instantly recognizable from a mile away, it's also different, unique, and I like that the sensors and cameras are high up on the phone so that when you're holding it, it doesn't interfere with your fingers. Now, no phone is perfect, and with the Pixel 8 Pro, I have two complaints. My first complaint is with the buttons. They feel a little bit plasticky and cheap. Versus the iPhone. Super minor detail, maybe it's just personal preference, but the second thing that I have against the design of this phone is the polished aluminum. Again, it feels slightly plastic-like, and also this transition from glass to aluminum isn't the smoothest, which can be felt whenever you're picking up the phone. This also isn't that big of a deal if you're using a case. Okay, now let's talk about the display. And the 6.7 inch OLED LTPO Super Actua display is by far my favorite part about the Pixel 8 Pro. As you can see, this display is gorgeous. The colors just pop out of the screen, and it is one of the nicest displays I've ever seen on any smartphone. By the way, if you're interested in this wallpaper, links will be down below for purchase. But yeah, it is such an incredible display, making it perfect for browsing the web, watching videos, reading, scrolling through social media. And I know this is sort of off topic, but I have really missed using a big phone. The last big phone I had was the iPhone 6 Plus, which was such a long time ago. But yeah, side by side, looking at the way my 6.1 inch iPhone compares to the 6.7 inch Pixel 8 Pro is incredible, but, and this is a big but, by default, the Pixel 8 Pro actually ships with a setting that operates the phone at a lower resolution. So if we go into settings, then display, and then all the way at the bottom, we'll see this setting called screen resolution. And if we click that, by default, the Pixel 8 Pro actually has high resolution enabled instead of full resolution. And yeah, this is not an insignificant amount of pixels being completely ignored by default. When I took this phone out of the box, it actually looks slightly blurry and I thought it was just something with the display or my eyes, uh, but turns out there was a setting all along. Now I completely understand that this is a setting that might increase battery life for some people or increase gaming performance, but I just feel like this should be a setting that they at least ask you during the setup process of this phone. But they don't. Now this phone still does only come in one size, 6.7 inches. And while this size is great, I know a bunch of people who would really appreciate a smaller size pro. So maybe next year, it would be great to add that to the lineup. Okay, let's talk about biometrics. So they're still keeping the in-screen fingerprint reader, which as you can see, works at a pretty good speed. But also this year, they've improved the face unlock. So with a more advanced algorithm that uses AI and machine learning, they're now able to enable face unlock for more secure apps, like banking apps and payment apps. It actually works really well. I did a whole separate video on this where I tested a cardboard cutout against another Android phone versus the Pixel 8 Pro. And that other Android phone was actually fooled by my cardboard cutout, whereas the Pixel 8 Pro wasn't. Which is really impressive considering they're both just using a simple front-facing camera for that face unlock. Now, despite all the improvements in the face unlock, I still found myself using the fingerprint reader 99% of the time, uh, just because with the always-on display, it is really easy just to put my finger there 
and unlock the phone. I found this to be the quickest way to get into my phone, whereas with face unlock, you sort of have to tap the phone and then swipe up, which just takes uh, one step more. Also, face unlock still has its limitations in dark environments as well as sunglasses. Uh, it's not gonna unlock when it's presented with those scenarios. But yeah, overall, this phone is the best hardware package that Google has ever made. They've gone away with the curved display. The frosted back feels amazing. And they've also added a thermometer. Yes, in case you didn't know, this circle underneath the flash module is actually a temperature sensor. And there's this thermometer app where you can choose from a variety of different surfaces and materials pointed at something and get a temperature readout right on your phone. And over the past 30 days, by far the best use case I found for this thermometer app is with liquids, specifically hot liquids. I do like making pour over coffee and over the past 30 days, I've sort of experimented with the perfect drinking temperature. Uh, and I found that 140 degrees or right around there seems to be best for me. Anything more than like 145 and I'm basically burning my tongue. And so I found that to be a pretty useful feature of the thermometer app. But other than that, I haven't really found much of a use for this temperature sensor. It is a neat little party trick. Uh, uh, that you can show your friends. And I believe they're also adding support for human temperatures, but so far that hasn't really been the case. I'd probably just put this one in the gimmick department. Uh, the iPhone has a LiDAR sensor and the Pixel 8 Pro has a thermometer. Now, before we talk about the cameras, I do wanna quickly touch on the Tensor G3 chip, which is Google's brand new four nanometer chip that really enables a lot of these AI features that they're pushing. And what I found with the Tensor G3 and the Pixel 8 Pro is that it provides one of the smoothest Android experiences that I've ever used. Coming from an iPhone, which is arguably the most smooth and polished experience on a smartphone, uh, the Pixel 8 Pro really holds its own. And while testing both, it was so similar to the point that it didn't really matter which when I pulled out out of my pocket uh, to do those everyday tasks like emails, social media. These are both extremely capable phones. And like I mentioned before, I actually ended up reaching for the Pixel most of the time because of the screen size. However, when it comes to taking photos, that's a different story. Overall, capturing photos and videos on the Pixel 8 Pro has been a great experience. I especially like the fact that there's a pro mode. So when you go down here, you can actually control certain aspects of uh, photography that you can't do in the iPhone, like shutter speed, ISO, focus, white balance. And it also shows you all of these settings as you change them up here. Now, compared to the iPhone 15 Pro, it's almost a toss up between the two phones. In some scenarios, I prefer the Pixel's photos and in other scenarios, I prefer the iPhones. One trend I noticed is that the iPhone tended to be warmer in food photos, whereas the Pixel tended to be cooler. But yeah, these phones are very, very close in performance. What do you guys think? Which photos do you prefer out of these two cameras? Now, when it comes to low light photography and videos, the iPhone pulls ahead. Hands down, it is just better in sharpness and just captures more detail. Though, honestly, I was quite blown away with how both of these phones handled these incredibly dark scenes. Like in this this photo with both of these phones night modes, this is actually a better representation of what it was like in terms of actual darkness at that scene. So it just goes to show how good computational photography has gotten over the years. But the one scenario that completely blew me away was astrophotography. Taken in pitch black darkness aimed up in the sky with a tripod, especially with the iPhone 15 Pro, the results I got were pretty insane. For videos, again, don't get me wrong, the pixel's great, but the iPhone just pulls ahead. There's a lot more detail when we zoom in and especially again in low light environments, the iPhone just performs way better. So yeah, the Pixel 8 Pro does have a very capable camera system. There are some things that the iPhone does better at, but for the most part, it's pretty good. But maybe something that the iPhone can't compete with the Pixel at all is with all of the features enabled by AI. With the Pixel, there's just an overwhelming amount of AI features that are just waiting for you to play with. Some are more useful than others. For example, Magic Eraser is one that I'd actually say is useful. I'd give that one like a four out of five. The results aren't always perfect, but it does the job. Then there's web page summaries where you can ask Google Assistant to summarize a web page for you. That's maybe like a three and a half out of five. It works well for shorter articles, but for longer articles, you're still limited to 
only a couple of bullet points, which doesn't do the best job of conveying what the article's actually about. Okay, this one's pretty funny. The ability to move subjects around. I'd give this one like a three out of five. It's hilarious, but I don't really know when you'd ever wanna use this feature. Swapping this guy, this one's a three out of five. Sometimes the results can look over edited and they do take a while to generate. Erasing sound from videos. This is a five out of five. What a great feature though. I don't know if a lot of people are gonna use it, but here's a demo of how it works. It is beautiful. And last but not least, reading web pages aloud. This one is a five out of five, and here's a sample of how that works. The Pixel 8 Pro has been the exact opposite. In fact, it's been pretty damn incredible. Don't miss these Pixel deals. Black Friday deal, Google Pixel 7a. Overall, how I feel about all of the AI features combined is that it's gonna take consumers a while to get used to all of them. For now, as they're being introduced, I think actual pro users can definitely take advantage of all of them, but I think the use cases can be very niche. And then there's also the question of whether people would actually use these features even if they could. Sometimes the best part about capturing photos and videos with your phone is that genuine moment. Even if the sunset wasn't particularly the way that you imagined it or there there's a bunch of background noise in your video. I think a lot of people are gonna be okay with those photos and aren't gonna think of using these AI features uh, to sort of manipulate them. But hey, those AI features are there and they're gonna continue getting better. And maybe at a certain point in the future, they'll get fast enough and intuitive enough that people will actually use them. But for now, I'd say it's sort of this learning period for consumers to get used to these tools. But yeah, that's been it with the Pixel 8 Pro, a really terrific and polished Android experience. It's got an incredible display. The back feels amazing. The operating system is nice and smooth. It's got a solid all day battery life and it just does all of the important things right. Really the best compliment that I can give the Pixel 8 Pro is the fact that I really would be down to switch to this phone from my iPhone if it weren't for all of the ecosystem stuff that Apple has. I really think that we're at a point where there's not that much of a difference between flagship Android phones and flagship iPhones. And when it really comes down to it, it is those ecosystem type things like iMessage, FaceTime, AirDrop that sort of keep people from switching, which is really unfortunate. But yeah, I am curious for those of you who own a Pixel phone, do you actually use any of the AI features? And if so, which AI feature have you found to be the most useful? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you aren't subscribed to the channel already, I'd greatly appreciate it if you join the channel. And yeah, that about does it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.